The gentleman from Florida, Congressman Micah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Borofsky. Um, let me follow up on uh, Mr. Cummings' uh, questions. Uh, uh, you, actually, you stated that uh, TARP is, uh, and these programs have grown into fifth, more than 50 programs, 50 different programs? Uh, not within the TARP. Within the TARP, there are 12 programs. In our report, we talk about approximately an additional 50 programs that are across the United States government, everywhere from the FDIC to the Fed to FHFA. So there are about 12 TARP, but 50 that you are, – are you keeping sort of a watch over, or just the 12 TARP? Uh, thankfully, we just have the 12. Um, okay. The rest are being well, – are again, in other agencies. Um, some of this seems to have dramatically expanded, and probably the, the nature of the, of the responsibility required some of that. But to get to the point um, Mr. Cummings was raising, uh, do you have enough resources to conduct uh, sufficient investigation and oversight? Well, we are building as an office. We, we currently have 70 personnel on board. We're building to about 160, which a target date of, of early next year. I read your, uh, not all of your report, but to uh, scan through it, and, uh, and you do have recommendations uh, in here. I notice only eight of 32 of your major recommendations have been implement, implemented, and then uh, five of 32 partially implemented. Do you, is there any way to enforce uh, implementation uh, or to uh, get us – do you have any recommendation that we can put some teeth into what you're doing or recommending? Um, really, we feel like our role, our statutory role, is to make these recommendations, uh, and that's so really we for – we have to pick, them up, pick up the responsibility. But uh, it appears that a number of your recommendations are not implemented, or it appears that some of your recommendations take a while to get implemented. For example, executive compensation, was that, I guess, the, that was finally adopted, a rule June 15th? That's correct. So that's why we've seen since June 15th a lot of folks interested in paying back their loans? I think that is an explanation that's been offered. Okay. But it took us, what, six months to get uh, that in place, uh, that recommendation implemented. Uh, that, is that correct? Uh, I think it was about four months from our February report. Mm -hmm. Then I think part of what you said is you're trying to develop and encourage transparency. Many of the things that deal with transparency are, are recommendations that have not, in fact, been addressed by uh, the, the various groups that you oversee. That still remains the case? It does. That's unfortunate. Um, and then maybe finally you could tell me uh, – first, I didn't vote for it, but we started out with a, about uh, – $700 billion that uh, members of Congress thought that they were going to uh, help uh, bail out financial institutions. And then you said it grew, uh, the, some of the liability grew to tr $3 trillion. Maybe you could explain that. Then $4.7 trillion. And then the total exposure is $23 trillion. So how did a little tiny, teeny $700 billion program balloon into uh, 23 billion uh, dollars worth of exposure. And I think maybe you could tell us the, the three trillion you cited level, uh, how far we're at risk at that, 4.7 and 23 is the ultimate. Sure. For, for the TARP, we start off with $700 billion, and we, we include a, a chart that gives the, the precise numbers for each program and where they come from. But then that number got expanded to, to approximately almost $3 trillion from other related federal government programs. So, for example, the, the public-private uh, investment program, uh, which we've been discussing, is seeded with about $100 billion of TARP money. But then the Federal Reserve, and at one point the FDIC, um, we're going to issue non-recourse loans from the Federal Reserve, that is loans that don't have to be paid back but are posted with collateral. So that ballooned it to? Right. And then also guarantees from the FDIC. You have the TALF program, which has been an up to a trillion dollar program, seeded by 80 or 100 billion dollars of TARP funds. So you have these other federal government uh, entities coming in and supplementing these programs. You have an asset guarantee of $300 billion uh, from Citigroup, which is done partly by Treasury, partly by FDIC, and partly Federal Reserve. So that's how we get to the $3 trillion. Those other numbers are actually non-TAR programs, or the $3 trillion actually in, 
in the 23.7, it does include the, the three trillion from the TARP, but it also includes other programs that have nothing to do with the TARP, uh, other than the fact that they are also supporting the financial industry, and other than the fact that the same institutions that can take advantage of the TARP also can take advantage of these other institutions, and at times can use one perhaps to pay off another. Uh, something we call it's it's something we've been, we've been coined as this bailout arbitrage. So uh, 700 billion seeded. Uh, the potential of 23.7 trillion? I would say the 700 seeded the 3 trillion, and then the other 20.7 trillion really comes from other federal government programs that are, that are non TARP related. Riding uh, sort of the saddle, the same saddle. All for the support of the financial, in, of, of the financial um, Thank you. system. Thank you. Will the gentleman yeah. yield? Will the gentleman yield? May, may I just ask, expired. Mr. Chairman, Gentleman's is time. that in your report, sir? Is that, is that what you just stated to uh, Congressman Micah's questions? Is that summarize that stair step? Yes, the the three trillion dollars and and what is there is all is is featured in a chart in the executive summary. Up to the twenty three. And all of that is set forth in section three of our report with the explanations of what those numbers really mean. Thank you. Right. Gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Kucinich.